For the given cosine function, we're asked to determine the vertical shift, midline, amplitude, period, and phase shift or horizontal shift. We want the cosine function to be in this form here. Notice right now it's not quite in this form because we have 2x minus pi over 8, which needs to be in the form of b times the quantity x minus d, which means we need to factor 2 from the expression. And let's show some work for this. If we have 2x minus pi over 8, and we need to factor 2 from the expression, we need to have a 2 in the numerator of pi over 8. And therefore, we will multiply the numerator and denominator of pi over 8 by 2. And now we can factor 2 from the expression. If we factor 2 from the expression, we have 2 times the quantity x minus. And for the fraction, we're factoring out the 2 from the numerator, which leaves us with x minus pi over 16. Notice how we distribute, we still have 2x minus pi over 8. So let's write the given function as y equals. Also notice how in this form, the constant is on the right, and it's given on the left, which is fine. But let's rewrite the given function as negative 10 times cosine of the quantity 2 times the quantity x minus pi over 16, and then minus 3. In this form, we can easily determine the values of a, b, c, and d, and determine the characteristics of the graph. Notice that a is equal to negative 10, b is equal to positive 2, d in this form is equal to positive pi over 16, and finally c is equal to negative 3. We're first asked to find the vertical shift. The vertical shift is indicated by the value of c. So because c is equal to negative 3, and because c is equal to negative 3, or less than zero, the function is translated down the absolute value of c units. And therefore the vertical shift is down three units. For the basic cosine function, the midline is the x-axis or y equals zero. Because we have a vertical shift of down three units, the midline is now y equals negative three. The amplitude is indicated by the absolute value of a. Since a is equal to negative 10, the absolute value of negative 10 is equal to positive 10, and therefore the amplitude is positive 10. However, because a is negative, we do have a reflection across the midline. The period is equal to two pi divided by b, so two pi divided by b in our case is equal to two pi divided by two, because b is equal to two, which simplifies to pi radians. So the period is pi radians, and then finally for the phase shift, the horizontal shift, again because it has to be in the form of x minus d, d is positive pi over 16 units, and because d is positive or greater than zero, the function is translated right d units. So we have a phase shift of right pi over 16 units. Now let's verify these results by looking at the graph of the given function. Because we have a vertical shift of down three units, the midline is y equals negative three, which is here. Because we have a phase shift of right pi over 16 units, we will graph one period of the given cosine function starting at x equals pi over 16, indicated by this red vertical line here. Because the period is pi radians, if we add pi to pi over 16, we get 17 pi over 16 radians indicated by this red vertical line here. So between these two red vertical lines, we have one complete graph of the given cosine function. Because the amplitude is positive 10 and the midline is negative three, negative three plus 10 is equal to positive seven. So we have a maximum function value of positive seven and negative three minus 10 is negative 13 the minimum function value is going to be negative 13. And then finally to graph the basic cosine function over one period, we partition the period into four equal subintervals, and the pattern over the period is maximum, midline, minimum, midline, maximum. But because a is negative 10, we have a reflection across the midline, and therefore if we divide this period into four equal subintervals, because of the reflection across the midline, the pattern is minimum, midline, maximum, midline, and minimum. 
Once we have this piece of the graph, we can simply copy and paste this graph over a larger interval. So this graph does verify our results are correct. I hope you found this helpful.